If you've ever tried to get your clients Stripe, Square, Shopify, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, or PayPal transactions into QuickBooks or Xero, you've probably pulled your hair out a few times trying to get the income and fees recorded correctly so the deposit amounts match the bank statement. Do you know you could be using Cinder to automatically do this for you? Stay tuned to hear more from our sponsor, Cinder, later in the episode. And so... What I say and what I have been saying is if you want to reduce abortion, simply making it illegal is not necessarily going to do what you want it to do. Like, could you have somewhat of a drop? Yeah, but but if you're really serious about it, there are other policies and things you can do to truly get that rate to drop. Coming to you weekly from the OnPay Recording Studio, this is the Cloud Accounting Podcast. Welcome to the Cloud Accounting Podcast. I'm Blake Oliver. And I'm David Leary. And I am Laurelyn Wilson. Laurelyn, thank Hi. you so much for joining <laughs> us today. It's great to have you. Oh, thanks for inviting me on. Well, you know, I, I, I feel like I should explain why you're on the show today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it is Sunday evening. Thank you, by the way, for taking time out of your Sunday evening. Uh, <laughs> yes, I feel like that's course. especially valuable time. <laughs> you know, the news dropped on Friday about the Supreme Court decision and abortion in this country. And that's the sort of news that's just like dominates the national conversation. This is, this is taking over all of our social media feeds. This is the thing that everyone's talking about. And Dave and I do this show weekly, right? We, we talk weekly about the news. Sometimes it's about current events and accounting happens to fall into that. And, and we talk about that in the context of accounting and finance and technology. And I, I was thinking to myself, how could we not talk about this this week? Mm-hmm. Right? How could we just do a show on Saturday like we normally do and not have this be in the conversation? Because it's like on my mind. And so I was talking about this with my wife, having a drink while we watched the sunset. And um, I, I was telling her what I wanted to talk about. And she was like, at first, she was like, "No, you can't. You cannot, cannot talk about this on your show. You're going to destroy your your show." <laughs> and and then I, I I she she we had a conversation, and actually she's like, "Okay, actually, I see I see how you could somehow make this an accounting and finance related discussion, but it can't just be you and David. <laughs> it cannot be two <laughs> middle aged white guys talking about abortion on their podcast, right?" Uh, <laughs> and I said, "Well, this is actually very." appropriate because Laura Lynn Wilson just launched her own podcast and I've wanted to have her on the show to promote it. And uh, also like the day we launched your show, that's when the Supreme Court decided to issue their decision, totally preempting <laughs> all of our yeah news. So I said, let's get Laura Lynn on the show. We'll balance this thing out. We'll have somebody who's actually made human lives right on the show to yes, talk about this two issue. Of them. Because, two of them, right? Mm-hmm. And I think there is an accounting and finance angle to this. There's a numbers yeah. angle to everything. And when you approached me like about doing this, you kind of caught me off guard via text. And I, I, I was like, I didn't see the angles. And then, you know, you called me on the phone and explained it. But after the last two shootings, I deep dived for five, six, seven hours on tax law and guns mm. and the money and the economic impact. And so you could argue all these things because tax law makes social policy and vice versa. Social policy policy dictates tax, dictates tax law. So how do you not talk about these issues? On the right. accounting podcast, they, they are right. very, very accounting related things, and you just reminded me of that, you know, the other night. So, and that's why Laura Lynn's in. And you're right; we yeah. can do this just on our own, regardless of my own personal experiences in this topic. I think you're right; you have to have female on the show. Yeah. So, debits and credits are not just accounting; it's life. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about we're going to talk about this important issue in the context of that. I have something to say about that, but like. I don't know. First, Laurelyn, uh, here we have been talking for several minutes. Mm-hmm. It's your, <laughs> do you have anything you want to say about this? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know what? I think I should just first start by saying I used to be like, if we go back 20 years, I'm 37 right now. So if we go back to my late teens, early 20s, I was staunchly a pro-life, super right wing conservative person. So I can, I've seen kind of both sides of the aisle and it's been what I would say a slow kind of meticulous journey to the other side. 
you know, I come from it with a perspective of understanding the other side. So it's like everything they say, I used to both believe and I can understand why they hold those viewpoints. But for me personally, this evolution happened just from me stepping outside of my bubble and educating myself and listening to stories and meeting people, you know, who grew up in situations a lot different than me. And part of that journey was me realizing like, wow, I was really in a bubble, like a very safe bubble that for a time there was a part of me who could just never comprehend. Like, why would anyone ever choose to do that. I, I don't understand. And then you you hear the stories and you're like, okay, put me in that situation instead of the very safe upper middle class white upbringing I had. And then things don't look so, you know, so different anymore. And so that's kind of been like my empathetic journey coming full circle of understanding really what the other side is, which is not, you know, and I'm trying to word things in a way that I don't want to offend people. I'm not out here to offend people who are happy about it. Like, I'm not trying to do that because I think there's a lot of middle ground to be had. And what kind of preempted Blake inviting me on the show was I did a TikTok video kind of talking about some of the numbers of abortions because it's been my belief for a pretty long time now that the issue, the issue is never the issue. You know, it's not people having abortions. It's why are they having them? And it's Mm. kind of working backwards and then solving for the actual problem and not this, you know, kind of band-aid solution of, oh, if we just make it illegal, all the problems go away, you know? So. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So so were you raised in a religious household? Yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing. My parents are still very religious and I actually too would consider myself religious, but it looks a lot different than it did 20 years ago. And when I say a lot different, like if I were to use like a, a phrase I would say I try to recklessly love people like, and that is just going to be my default. I'm not going to try and judge people for stuff. It's like, you know what, if, if, if I don't agree with them or if they're doing something, I don't understand, like my default will just be to recklessly love them and let the chips fall where they may. I was raised Catholic and I was the uh, president of the young Republicans club in my high school. (laughs) So we've had a similar journey. (laughs) So, so yeah, I, I have I had an interesting like political journey when I went to college. I saw different viewpoints. I, I went to a Catholic high school. Uh, you know, I, I was raised believing life begins at conception, right? That's what I was mm-hmm. taught. And so, I, like you, Laura Lynn, I feel like I can see both sides because mm-hmm. I've believed both sides mm-hmm. <laughs> at different times, and mm-hmm. I I feel like it's um, I don't like either extreme. Yeah. What about you, David? I was raised Catholic, but I'd never, this is never a big issue per se, like from a a belief standpoint. But with my previous wife, we had a lot of fertility issues. Mm. And so you start going in that path, you start thinking about embryos differently and heartbeats and cells differently and, you know, what you consider or not consider. And, you know, throughout that journey, like, we, we actually had to terminate a pregnancy mm. at 17 weeks. Oh, geez. And the way it's looking now with this, the change of the sco- of Roe v. Wade, in theory, Arizona has now, or is on that 15 week march. So what we did would be considered illegal now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's, uh, and, and I get it, right? Like we had to make a decision. And at the end of the day, it was our decision very private decision. But I do get the other argument, the other side. Like I held a 17 week old baby in my hands. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like it's kind of a, like, I understand this, like when is too late argument. Mm -hmm. Right. But when push comes to shove, it can't be legislated. Every individual has to make this call and there is no, it's not easy. It's not even a right call, right? It's not right and not wrong. It's just every individual has to have the freedom to just do that. Right. It's just not, Mm-hmm. Okay, for somebody else to dictate on that on somebody else, and we can get in the tax part of it that I learned about when that happened later on. We can really pick Laura Lynn's brain about the tax <laughs> issues of this. But like my perspective was really, you know, influenced a lot by, you know, having to do it myself. I mean, that's not the right words, but going through the experience myself, and on top of that, like different infertility things. Because if you think about it a little bit differently, right, as far as like what you consider 
because a lot of them, it is, I think the, you call it like a chemical pregnancy. Like, are you, but yes, there's a pregnancy, but you know, right. So well, early, and, you know, where does that fall in on? And for me, I have like zero experience, personal experience with any of this. Uh, and it wasn't until recently, I feel like that people started really sharing their stories. And I, I didn't realize it until I looked at the numbers, just how common it is. Mm-hmm. So this is what I want to talk about today is, David, I totally respect your feelings on this issue. And like that, that argument of the, the you know, personal freedom versus this is a human life thing. We don't need to have that on yeah, this yeah, show, yeah. right? That's a, that's that's what's going on everywhere else. Yeah, right? there's a lot of places you can have that. Yeah, you can go on, yeah, yeah, you can go on yeah. Facebook and have that argument, right? Yeah, and that's a philosophical uh, discussion, right? You know, so so what I would like to do is talk about like the numbers, so get an understanding of what the situation is, and then the impact this will have on people from a number standpoint. Mm-hmm. And and like Lauralyn, like you said, this idea that. Uh, if you if you want to re- if you want to reduce abortions, what's the actually the, the most effective way to do this? Mm-hmm. Right? What is actually the asking the why question? Why are people yeah having them? Yeah. I was just saying, before you in the why, should we just talk about the, the numbers that actually exist? I think I saw something yeah, this yeah. week that like one in four women, like you meet, will have had an abortion in her history. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's that common. one in four. Yep. Yeah, one in four. So I I didn't see that stat, but it doesn't seem crazy to me because I saw a, a stat from, is it the Guttmacher, Guttmacher? Gut, good, it feels like it's Gut, Guttmacher. Well, I, I mean, know. like if it, if I was in my German class in high school, it would be Guttmacher Institute. Some, you know, it, it has varied from year to year, but about 20% of pregnancies end in an abortion, something like that mm-hmm. in the last few years, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just actually like a lot more than I thought would have guessed. Like if you just had me on and asked me, hey, Blake, what percentage do you think it is? I probably wouldn't have guessed 20%. Mm-hmm. So it's actually fairly common. Yeah. And the, and I have uh, right here the two most common causes for people give for uh, why they've done it, like why they decide. Because, okay, so first off, almost every person who gets an abortion, it's a result of an unplanned pregnancy. So because okay. there are abortions that happen in instances like David was describing where it's very much they want they want the baby but because of viability issues they aren't able to ca- carry the baby to term and have to terminate it which is absolutely awful you know and so for the people though who it's unplanned and they choose to abort their number two causes they say are number one they're not ready for a baby and number two so 25 percent say that they're not ready for a baby and 23 percent say they can't afford a baby and so, wait, so, uh, so let's say that again 25 percent say they're not ready for a baby. So this is probably, you know, because of their age and most likely because of, you know, they're in the middle of their schooling or early in their professional career. Got it. So Mm -hmm. quarter, not ready. And Mm -hmm. then the other number? Can't afford it. And what is that number? 23% of people said they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so about almost even, right? Like Mm -hmm. a quarter and a quarter Mm -hmm. can't afford it. And what's the other 50%? It was was all... kind of random reasons okay. another one and i'm pulling this a little off the top of my head i'm 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 off by i'm going to be off by a couple percentage points or i might be spot on it is that actually 48 percent of people who end up getting abortions were actually on contraceptives when it happened really 48 yeah. percent were on contraceptives and got pregnant yes and then okay yes because of contraceptive con- because their contraceptive failed or they didn't use it correctly. And that's a whole, right. you know, we, we right. can talk about that in a little bit of kind of the education of people not understanding, you know, reproductive yeah. health and contraceptives and how to use them correctly. Yeah. Well, that's, that is a, a high, very high number, like a yeah, half, right? Yes. Almost half. It's like your contraceptive failed. And then what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This episode of the Cloud Accounting Podcast is sponsored by Relay Financial. For those listeners that haven't been following along with my drama caused by PNC when they purchased BBVA and botched the migration, to quickly summarize, PNC bank feeds wouldn't work with QuickBooks Online. The website had all my old BBV transactions just listed as debits and credits with no vendors or payees. And to top it all off, the June bank statement was just missing. Like June never happened. 
Let's just say my 2021 books were a mess. So for 2022, I made the commitment to stop using PNC and switch everything to Relay. Relay is a no-fee online banking platform built for you and your small business clients. Relay understands and solves all the things we as accountants and bookkeepers care about, security, bank feeds, automation, reconciliation. I invited both my interns to my Relay account. They created their own user ideas and passwords, and within minutes, they were using Relay to create virtual debit cards, physical debit cards, download statements, and reconciling. Now, the bank feeds in my QuickBooks Online are reliable, and my 2022 books are in order. To stop fighting with an unreliable bank that doesn't care about you or your small business clients, head over to cloudaccountingpodcast.promo slash relay. That is cloudaccountingpodcast.promo forward slash R-E-L-A-Y. What, are there any other numbers that are like, like we need to know about just the state of abortion? I think I saw an article from NBC in February that said half of all U.S. abortions are done by pills now. Yes. That was, so yes. On. Yes, I, That's I interesting. came that, yeah. And so that is that is uh, an FDA-authorized medication. Mm-hmm. You get it typically by mail. That's often how it's delivered. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can go get it at the this pharmacy, what, too. This is Plan B or some variations of... some. Right, right. and it's like, uh, it originally it was up to six weeks and now it's up to 10 weeks, I think is Mm -hmm. what the FDA says. So basically in the first 10 weeks of your pregnancy, you get this pill, you take it and then that ends the pregnancy. And then the only other thing I saw some crazy stat on and it, I I don't know, developed full context. I don't know if it was just U S or worldwide or what, but the majority of the abortions are, are getting done by people of Christian faiths. Yes, I saw that. I think it, the, okay. it was fifty four percent was the number like I came that, yeah. across today. I, I, you're talking about the doctors doing no, it? No, the, the people the, getting the people procedure. Getting oh, people yeah. getting it. So, mm-hmm. so the majority of people getting abortions say they're Christians. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's a whole nother deep dive on like psychology <laughs> and and the dogma of the church yeah. and you know the shame of getting pregnant and having to hide that and getting an abortion. Like that's a lot to unwrap in that, but it's just from a number well, standpoint, I thought that was an interesting that that's the majority of the abortions. Are mm-hmm. Well, it, it isn't, it, it's, it's an interesting thing to know because right. Like most Christian churches, I think, right. Or faiths. I mean, there's a huge variety, but I feel like most would say don't get an abortion Yeah. and yet, and yet that's the stat. 54% are Christian who get abortions. Yeah. Well, and two, if you talk about kind of sexual education and states that teach abstinence only education, which of course are because of the religious beliefs of the politicians, you have the highest rates of teen pregnancy. Yeah, right, right. Because when people don't know how to use contraceptives or that they exist or, yes, like or how, how even or, people get pregnant. Yes, or what days like, here, I'll ask yeah. you, David will probably know this. I'll ask you, Blake. I bet David knows okay. he's done. The IVF. How many days out of the month can a woman get pregnant? On on if you're on an IVF? No, no, no. Like if or just, just in, in just general. like naturally. Yeah. Right? If they're I not bet taking David any. knows this, but I'm not gonna my mouth. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't ask me, <laughs> hey, Laura. Because my boys could listen to this podcast, so as far as they're concerned, it is every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you a hint. It's not every day. <laughs> okay. It's like uh, f- four days. It, it's yeah. It's basically it's there's. Seven, right? It's around ovulation. It's like you know, uh, up to I think it's like five days before, yes! and then like two days after is oh, kind of your I was, window. I was a little low that you could do it, but so I like mean, six some days. people don't realize that. So it's yeah. like some of like you can. Part of, you know, if you are planning, you don't want to get pregnant, part of what you can do is actually just track your ovulation. And you right. can see, okay, these are my these are my high likely to get pregnant, you know, days. I should not, or I should take extra precautions on these days. But it's like, this is stuff they're not, this is stuff people don't know. They're not taught it. Right. And as a result, you get these people, you know, then you get un- unplanned pregnancies. So I think that's a good baseline of knowledge. Prepping for this has taught me a whole lot that I didn't know. And you just gave me some new numbers <laughs> I had no idea about. Like, wh- what is the percentage of uh, contraceptive failure? Does anyone know that? If it's used correctly, most of them are like 90, 
I, I, I very heard high, a, right? I heard a doctor today, uh, OBGYN. I was I was watching his TikTok video. He was talking about IUDs, and it's like ninety nine point seven percent, or it's, it's yeah, it's like only point zero three percent of chance of people get pregnant off. So if you use it correctly, it's very high. Even like I don't, I don't want to get too but, descriptive, but but, but, but uh, oh, go ahead. Bill, perspective like on this whole ninety nine point nine percent, right? That mm-hmm. means for any of these cloud apps you use, that means it's down three days a year. Like you mm-hmm. have to like put this in perspective or if you ever buy 99.99% dust-free cat litter. Yeah. Like, yes. That explains what 99.99% means. It's yes. like not it's, perfect. It's not even it's, close it, to perfect. That's saying yes. like every, every time you have sex, yes. there's a 0.01% chance or a point, it could be 0.1, right? Yes. It could be, which is... You know, over over a lot of people, yeah, doing it a lot of times, yeah, like, is a meaningful number. It's yeah, a lot. and and yeah. a lot of people just assume like this is a hundred percent effective when it's not. Right. You it's know, not. but again, it goes back to the education piece, knowing that this is not a hundred percent effective no matter what. And if you really don't want to get pregnant, then you need to take second, right. third precautions on top of that. So, Laurelin, yes, do abortion bans restrictions reduce abortions? Statistically, no, they do not. Explain. So back to Guttmacher, what they did with the WU, the World Health Organization, was just um, from, I think it's 2015 to 2019, and they're, the Guttmacher has been around since 68. They're like kind of the leader of studying Uh, abortion policies and statistics worldwide. So they're kind of like the source for it. But they did a joint study and basically found that if you take the countries with the loosest abortion laws, and then they took all the countries with the strictest abortion laws and compared their rates, they were the exact same rates. And so what I say and what I have been saying is if you want to reduce abortion, simply making it illegal is not necessarily going to do what you want it to do. Like, could you have somewhat of a drop? Yeah, but but if you're really serious about it, there are other policies and things you can do to truly get that rate to drop. So that's always been yeah, like kind of yeah. my argument behind so, it. That is fascinating. So you're you're saying in countries with different restrictions, some are very permissive, some are very restrictive. Mm-hmm. The abortion rate is essentially the same. Mm-hmm. But I think I even saw here in our in, in the states when Roe v. Wade was enacted or upheld originally, it's been on the decline since for the last fifty years. Just in our own country, is this a true stat? Like, is that thing making sense of? We've seen. Well, it so. kind of went up and then like peaked in uh, eighty one, and then it's been going down pretty much for forty okay. years, and then. Um, COVID it was made it pointed go up out to again, me on though. Twitter in the past three years that it's actually gone up a little bit in the U.S. And uh, Guttmacher was talking about it. And they basically said, like, we don't know yet why this was happening. In my head, my first thing I think of was like, well, there was a pandemic for two years. And yeah. people were probably afraid and they probably couldn't get to their doctor. There was probably delay in getting their contraceptions. Like, We, we knew people who had babies during COVID and like you couldn't – there were husbands who weren't able to be there with their wives. Yeah, having the baby. Like, yeah, that was sort of some of the situations. Yes, in the in the really bad time. Yes. So like, yeah, would you re- like? Of course, uh, to me, it makes sense. Like the rate would go up. Yeah, and especially like not to bring politics into it too much, but it's a highly charged issue. If you yeah. are a person who is more left leaning, and you are seeing how people on the opposite uh, side of the aisle are acting in terms of you know, it doesn't seem like they're taking simple precautions that could keep COVID from spreading, like. There could be a lot of fear of, oh my gosh, if I get pregnant and I get COVID, like yeah, this could turn out really bad. We don't know what happens yeah. to to babies yet. Like it's too new. So I could yeah. I could very much see how kind of those the political things that were going on could influence yeah. people too. Remember Zika virus? Oh like my how, gosh. how freaked out people got about that. Like yeah. I don't want a baby with a shrunken head kind of yeah. situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like to- we didn't know that couldn't happen that might not happen with COVID. Like mm-hmm. so that makes sense. So so what does actually reduce let me let me let me set it up this way. So like um one thing that's interesting about my family is like we are a family that uh my extended family that's like very divergent. 
in mm-hmm. political issues. So like I have a side of the family, like my wife's side of the family that are total like LA, California liberals, right? Can't, mm-hmm. can't even contemplate anyone seeing it a different way. <laughs> and then, and then we got the family up in Sacramento that are farmers. And like my aunt is a abortion activist, anti-abortion activist. Oh, wow. And like literally goes out and from what I understand of her activities and traveling around is like lobbies, leg- legislators oh, wow. on this issue in the state. Mm-hmm. I think if people start looking at their own families, everybody's going to talk like that. I know I can it, say the same. There's people right? that very, and, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, we're all Americans at the end, right? We're all yeah. going to have different beliefs and views. Mm-hmm. So, so my aunt very clearly believes that, you know, restricting abortions will save lives. And that's her life's mission. I mean, she's been doing this for like decades, right? Mm-hmm. And the question is, like, does it actually help? And what you said, Laurel, in those stats make me think, well, maybe it doesn't, right? Like, so what, if you want to reduce, setting aside the argument of whether or not it's right or wrong, Mm -hmm. if you just practically, we're accountants, we're practical, right? If you just want to do this practically, like, if you want to reduce abortions, Mm -hmm. what's the best way to actually do it? Like, what makes, and that, that, that leads us to the question is, like, why do women and men, right? Their partners. Why do mm-hmm. women and, and get their get a? Why do they get them? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to me, to me, per, I, I think it's all. It's a very personal question, right? Yeah. I'll just start with mine, and then we can talk about yours and like the the stats. But like for me personally, it's just one child is very expensive. <laughs> like I'm I'm very honest about it. It's like financial. Like I would have to like my quality of life, our quality of life as a family would change dramatically. Yes. Um, so it's like it's just. I, it would be nice. I would I would like to have a, a bigger family, but for me, like financially, it would be a real hard thing to do. And I can actually I, put a number to that of what that cost is. Yeah, the average cost of raising a child is two hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars. So it's gone up in the last seven to ten years. Over then, a quarter. Is it of still a true? Dollars. It's fifty. It's fifty gram more if you have a girl. I didn't. I didn't see that statistic, but that would make My, sense. <laughs> So that is for a middle class family, like the average family. Yes. Uh, do you know what it is if you go up in income? Oh no, it didn't break out those numbers. Yeah. So I I saw a chart. Future cost of raising a child. This is from the USDA. Uh, and I think this was like 2015. And it shows that first of all, it's gone up. Or no, this is over time, so it's not going up over time. It's going up over the years of the child. But um, so it's that that quarter million dollar number, mm-hmm. right, is kind of the average for like middle class. If you go up to parents making more than $107,000, so the family, uh-huh. which is, I think, you know, a lot of our audience, right, we're accountants, right? Yeah. Accountants tend to do pretty well. Mm-hmm. That cost approaches a half a million dollars <gasps> Holy per <moly>. child. <laughs> $454,770 in 2015. Wow. Yeah. So like just round that up with inflation now, we're talking half a mil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. So oh, like, why aren't people have it? Why don't people want to have children? Right? Yeah, because they, because like they said, what was it? Twenty three percent of people said they can't afford to. Yeah. And here's the thing: it's not like our government or state governments have been doing a great job of building a social safety net for these women. Have been passing laws to get you know childcare costs covered, to get you know actual like maternal and paternal leave that all these other kind of developed countries have, and it's like. Yeah, can you blame women? Because you're not actually doing the things that would want them, that would make them feel like they could afford to do this. This episode of the Cloud Accounting Podcast is sponsored by Cinder. With direct connections to Amazon, Shopify, eBay, Stripe, Square, and 20 of the most popular online and e-commerce platforms, Cinder automatically categorizes and accurately posts transactions into the accounting system allowing you to easily prepare your clients' data and organize their consolidated P&L regardless of the number of platforms they may be selling on. Cinder allows you to use the general ledger of your choice, QuickBooks, Xero, or even Cinder's own GL, which is designed specifically for e-commerce businesses and contains everything you need out of the box to make tax season a breeze. Cinder can sync all the necessary details like inventory items, tax, shipping, discounts, classes, and locations. It even correctly handles the processor fees. With tools like a duplicate detector and rollback functions, you can rest assured your client's books will never get messed up because you can undo and restore any synced data with literally one click. If you need support from Cinder, they offer free help using your favorite means of communication, be it chat, email, or phone. 
To try out Cinder for free, head over to cloudaccountingpodcast.promo slash Cinder. That is cloudaccountingpodcast.promo forward slash S-Y-N-D-E-R. Cinder, easy accounting for e-commerce businesses. Laurelyn, how, how much paid time off do we give to mothers in this country federally? It's uh, zero, zero dollars zero and zero, zero days, cents. Yeah. I learned that seven years ago when we had Thomas. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. I, so it, it's a complete luxury of people that have a nice job at a tech company that has nice benefits. Like, mm-hmm. well, just like it, just it, any it job is a complete. With if, if you get to yeah. take time off when you have a child, it is a luxury and a privilege. And to say mm-hmm. it isn't true, it would be yeah. a complete lie. And you're right. This is it, there's so many things beyond just the the actual cost, right? It's like, where do I have time? If, I'm not going to have time to raise my child, right? I'm not going to be able to finish my education, right? Mm -hmm. There's all these types of things. It's not just the cost of a child. It's all the other stuff um, involved. Yeah. Well, and actually, oh, I was going to say- No, please, Laura, go ahead. So I was, you know, I was reading um, an article that, oh gosh, I wanted to give him credit, um, that Jeff Gundersdorf on Twitter uh, linked it under my TikTok video. And he's like, here's some like of the economic numbers kind of behind what you're talking about. So this was a marketplace interview with Jason Lindo, who is a professor of economics at Texas A&M. And he was talking about, you know, the actual economic impact on women. And the people who, as always, take the brunt of it are lower income women and women of color. Like these, mm-hmm. these women... <laughs> Like they, they can't get out from under it because they literally have all these things working against them. But it's like without a- access to the abortion, you know, then they are usually disadvantaged in their educational careers or early professional careers. And then right. you have this cost of this baby, but you have this expensive baby and you don't have a good paying job now to raise that baby because you had to give up your education or your career early on. Yeah. And then these children are being raised in poverty. And then it's like this cycle just keeps happening over and over and over again. Just the cost of childcare is staggering. (sighs) Uh, So like, obviously my experience is not typical because I worked for one of those tech companies David was talking about when we had (laughs) Thomas and Mm -hmm. I had benefits and everything. And like, we were able to afford whatever we needed. And we were living in LA. Our childcare, I think when he was an infant, because, you know, Samantha works. Uh, she went back to work. It was like close to $2,000 a month. Yeah. Right? And I hear it's like $1,000 to $2,000 a month is not unusual. Not bad. Yeah. And that's not bad. If you're in a big city like Seattle, I was reading some, uh, I think it was a some Twitter person I follow, their PhD, and I think they were saying that in where they were, it was $3,800 a month. $3,800 a month. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. So that's like a serious financial consideration. Yeah. And, and like, we were in a situation where we were like lucky that that just meant giving up vacations. Yeah. Right. It didn't mean, or, you know, like there's a lot of people for whom even at the lower end of what you're spending, it's, it's several hundred dollars a week. And that's, that might be like a huge chunk of what you make. You just don't have, how do you do it? And we don't have, I mean, there are programs for some people in need, but I think we can agree that like broadly as a country, we don't really offer a lot of support. No. Mm-mm. Child like child paid, you know, until your kids in like kindergarten, it's pretty hard to get oh, any yeah. of those childcare costs covered. Mm-hmm. And it's not like the jobs available to working class people pay a lot. At least now now they're starting to a little bit more, but mm-hmm. you know, fifteen dollars an hour, right, doesn't go so far. Yeah, well, and, you have to pay for all that. And you know what's interesting is obviously like it, it either needs to be leg, like it needs to be legislated, like there needs to be some type of of paid leave. But you're, I've seen these bigger companies telling um, employees, "Hey, if you need to travel for abortion care, we'll cover that." Yeah. And my thought though is, well, will you also cover maternity and paternity care? They should. Exactly. Like. <laughs> but so, uh, here's the thing abortion is the, care is going to be far cheaper which is like i see what they're doing but it's like okay if oh, we're that's kind of messed up yes oh my god that's 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 really sc- wow yes. you're, you're thinking like wow. they've, they've made a decision on this like hey we're going to offer this because it'll save us money on this end 
and now that they do make decisions like that, <laughs> right? Like with um, healthcare, right? They, this is why they give uh, a lot of companies if they for every dollar they spend on gym incentives, right, or hiring a personal trainer for the for the employer yeah. for all the employees, they get a, two, a three to one ratio on the back end from a health insurance cost for every dollar they spend on the front end for exercise and wellness programs. So yeah. so people do that math, right? Yeah. Um, now. Yeah. No, I, I, I wouldn't. I would to Lauren Lynn just brought it up. It's, it seems very yeah. deceivious, but people do do that math in at those levels. Well, so it's a perfect example of like the calculus that happens when you're a parent or you're a corporation that employs future parents. Mm -hmm. The cost of a child these days is so enormous that people are, I, I think that's a big reason why our generation is having fewer children, mm -hmm. right? Laurel and I'm 38. Yeah. So we are like at the early edge of the millennial generation there. Mm -hmm. And I just see it with all my friends, right? Like yeah. very few people are planning on having, honestly, like even two children. Yeah. Right, it's like one and done in a lot of cases, and, yeah, and that's I the natural uh, growth of a country, as it as the as a country ages, and you produce less labor. If you want to think about it that way, yeah, it's mm -hmm. kind of a natural mm -hmm. evolution of countries. The replacement rate drops like over time, right? Um, but like that's exactly what we don't want as a country. <laughs> like we, it, it's funny because we talk on our show about like the great resignation, the talent shortage, all the time, right? Like this is. This is just getting worse and it's been getting worse over decades because of like the same trends we're talking about right now, the, mm -hmm. the cost. Yeah. Yeah. Like when people are like, oh, are you ever going to have another? And I'm like, in this economy, like who can, have, who can you already afford have two? two? You already have two, Laura. Like, I you've know. Done your job. <laughs> you've done your duty. Like how, who, who the, who the heck is asking you that question? <laughs> people who don't have to take care of them. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and so. We, let, let's get into some taxes because I've always had it ever since I went through my situation 20 years ago. If I said this tax issue with this whole thing, Wait, bef before oh, we, we do, can we just tie up yet? the okay. bow? Can we just okay. tie the bow on this Thanks whole, that. like, yeah? So, this issue, like, this is the thing that strikes me as the strangest, most like disconnected thing in the whole current environment is that the party that is anti abortion is also anti paid parental leave anti-paid child care, mm -hmm. anti-public anti all schools. Of these uh, sometimes anti-contraceptives, which right. I haven't okay. put this fact in yet. This is like, there's one low-cost solution to reducing abortions that's proven. I think the statistic I read was it reduced abortions by like 68 to 72%. It's just no-cost contraceptives providing Meaning, free birth control. If the government provided free... Vasectomies for boys. <laughs> that would be that if, if just your boys, David. <laughs> just all you get this. Bad. I have a daughter too, you know. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, just like that. That to me doesn't. I mean, I understand. There's like some people have religious objections to contraceptives. Yeah, then don't. Then but, they don't have to take them. Right. Yeah, but yeah. you know they want to tell other people what to do as well. Mm -hmm. uh, like th that is. I, but but I mean, like, just from a like practical standpoint, like, wouldn't you rather have people taking contraceptives than getting abortions? Like, right? Like, lesser evils, if you have to put it that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyway. So, I think we can agree that that like there are ways financially. Oh wait, wait, we didn't even talk about the cost of having a baby. Oh, right, like actually giving birth. Oh, so oh. I saw <laughs> a stat validated by uh, my wife who said, yeah, that sounds right. That it's 5,000 to $11,000 just to have the baby, the delivery. And that's even if you have insurance. Oh yeah. And that would be if it was perfect. There's no right, complications, if, no extras. Right. We're going to call it. Right. Damn. No C-section, no preeclampsia, nothing. No, that's a lot and, of money. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ahead, David. I was going to say, and it's the same whether you take a baby home or not. Right. Yeah. And that's where I, there's a big tax issue I've always had. Like yeah, this whole thing. we're going to talk about that. Yeah, uh, but the, like the the thing that I always thought about, like the thing that I not always like just in the last day thought about, <laughs> like it's weird is like if you're gonna if you're gonna restrict the liberty of women and say you can't have an abortion, like at least pay for the delivery. Yes, right. Like at least. Yeah, and what's wild is other countries are like, wait, this isn't free for you. 
like they think that's insane yeah that we have to pay for our our to give birth now the counter argument is like oh you shouldn't have gotten pregnant in the first place <laughs> that right? to me well and this is kind of what i like in that too okay first off let's stop pretending that the only reason people have sex is just to have kids because otherwise you would have sex like twice and then be done for the rest of your life so like and too like just biologically you there's most of most of the month you can't even get pregnant anyways right but it's like saying that just because you consent to sex you consent to pregnancy and this is going to be my example i was last month i don't know i think i told you blake last month i was driving out in my nice 2021 car do 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 staying in my lane not speeding boom Get T-boned, rolled, my car's totaled. This is true, and you got hit hard. That car looked messed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, but like, it we're totally, lucky. yeah. We're lucky, you're, you, I'm glad you were in a big car. Uh, if I would have been in a sedan, there would have been no more Laurelin. Like, that's, that's the reality. Wow. Yeah. But it's like saying, okay, so we know driving, there is a risk that you could be in an accident. Someone could hit you, even if you do everything right. Right. If you follow all the rules, you're doing everything you're supposed to, that is still a risk. But it's who would ever come up to me and be like, well, that's just a consequence. That's a con your accident was actually just a consequence of you driving. So you probably, you know, if you don't want to ever get in an accident, just don't drive again. Like this is just not a realistic thing to say to people. So having sex is like driving. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you could just walk to work. Which also, though, you could get hit by a car. Yeah, so you could get hit by a car. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be a consequence yeah. of you walking and you you yeah. you you deserve that you have you that just, coming you Laurel, knew that you could, could just, happen you could just stay at home all the time and not go anywhere like, like, could you not. imagine though if insurance <laughs> like there was no insurance companies they're like well yeah it just happens it's a consequence of driving sorry <laughs> what <laughs> if everyone had to buy sex insurance <laughs> Like, yeah, I think you're on to something. <laughs> and then, and then, if you got pregnant, it would cover everything. Is that called health insurance? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Is that universal health care insurance? <laughs> I think we should just call it sex insurance, and then it, people would actually buy it, right? You'd be like, oh yeah, I, I have sex. I need to buy <laughs> I some got, sex I'm insured. Insurance. <laughs> that's a marketing <laughs> genius. Yeah, that's that's so so people. Really you, you have to put your card number in on tick on uh, not TikTok on Tinder. <laughs> It's great about this because people not having sex will buy that just to pretend they're having sex. And right. Because you don't it'll, want, it'll, it'll actually, you don't want people to That's what you want when you have an insurance pool. You need a bunch of people that aren't going to ever use it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a good model, Blake. I think you-, you Good business here. Yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to repackage health insurance as sex, sex insurance. insurance. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just specifically only for sex stuff. <laughs> This episode of the Cloud Accounting Podcast is sponsored by Canopy. Accounting practice management software should bring together all your firm's mission critical functions in one place. Client management, document management, workflow, time and billing, and payments to keep your team organized. Canopy knows that not all firms are on the same practice management journey or timeline. So Canopy lets you build your practice management platform as you need it. You start with client management as your foundation, then you choose the modules that your firm needs. And since nobody likes paying for modules they don't use, they offer modular pricing as well. Canopy integrates with QuickBooks Online, Xero, FreshBooks, CRMs, form builders, spreadsheets, calendars, email, and Zapier. They have a mobile app, centralized file management, fillable PDFs, a client portal, task management, and the list goes on and on. Via their integration with the IRS, you can easily retrieve all your clients' transcripts, notices, and child tax care credit payments without leaving Canopy. To try Canopy free for 30 days, head over to cloudaccountingpodcast.promo slash canopy. That is cloudaccountingpodcast.promo forward slash C-A-N-O-P-Y. Rewind to the hypocrisy, like you say, right? What, like, and I want to get to the tax stuff. Yeah, because it's tied to the tax thing, right? Like if you, mm -hmm. yeah. if you... If you're going to force them to have children, but you're not going to pay for the birth, and that's just the birth, not never mind, you know, the rest right. of the child's life and different events that may need medical or social policies and social money, right? But just yeah. even in the taxes, we have we're very hypocritical about this. Right. And I can know from, from my own case, right? Because it was 17 weeks and not 20 weeks. I this didn't get to have a dependent that year. Even though I had I spent the same amount on hospital expenses. 
I purchased everything to have a baby at the house. I mean, by the time you got the stores yeah. and the cribs and you all that stuff. Yeah. But I did not get the claim, a tax deduction for a dependent. And worse than that, I didn't get to claim a death either. Uh, so is this because it, the IRS was, says that, it, is this yeah, IRS, is this like in the law? Yeah. 20 weeks. Mm-hmm. 20, so you have to make it to 20 weeks. Now, I don't know what the current law is. You know, this is 20 years ago, but right. But it's like, wow. how can you make this law over here? It's going to be 15 weeks or whatever. You know, in some states, it's going to be at conception. Like, if that's the case, you should be able to declare dependent on your taxes then. With well, my point and of view. I found an article on this, David. Okay. So, and this actually, every couple of years, this comes up and these are actually Republican legislatures. It was, uh, I know R- R- uh, Mitt Romney was one of them, but they, there was an, um, at the end of January, they'd wrote the child tax credit for pregnant moms act. And that was to address this. And so, and this, um, covered also stillborn or miscarried babies. And so this is a tax credit, a child tax credit. If you are pregnant and then don't give birth to the following year. So there has been like rumblings in Congress, but it just hasn't gotten anywhere. And it, to me, you know, as someone who's given birth twice and gone through pregnancy and all the costs you incur <laughs> during that period, like a- a- absolutely this needs to be passed and we should have this. And then just more tax questions and maybe this is more specifically. So I'm an employee of a company that's going to pay for me to go out of state to get the you know medical tourism now it's going to happen right because we basically have mm-hmm. half the states are going to not allow it and half of them are going to be sanctuary states or whether or i think uh, california's mm-hmm. already declared they're going to be a sanctuary state right so now my mm-hmm. employees uh, and i've seen companies say they're going to reimburse employees up to four thousand dollars to get out of state medical mm-hmm. is that that's going to be into the w2 you're going to be taxed on that how's that going to work for these companies and those employees that are in that situation I read another article on that. Okay, and so it's so the prepared. famous accountant's answer. It depends. But pretty <laughs> much what they said is there was, and I am like, because this is a benefits issue is what it is initially. Okay. And so there's actually several different acts that come into play. But pretty much the consensus was a portion of it that's uh, determined kind of by the law of that state would be tax free to the employee. And then a portion of, then if it exceeded that, then that additional amount would be taxable. But then again, you have like states like Texas being like, well, if you have an employee here and you pay for them to go out of state, we are going to criminally prosecute your company for paying for that, for your employee. That's because Texas passed that that law where... So like Tesla relocated to Texas. If Tesla pays for one of their workers in Texas to go to California to get the abortion then Texas might prosecute Tesla yes. for paying for that. Yes. Like criminally? Yes. Well, they just passed that that law. Like, like, like anybody could report if they think there's an abortion and like get the Uber driver arrested and like anybody involved in the whole thing. That was, when was that? That was like, was that back it's, in it's September? Recent. It's recent. I, I want to say yeah, it was. Less, it's within a year. This was passed. Yeah. I think then, it was like September when those really strict, and it was like a $10,000, like I hate to call it this, a reward type thing for reporting. No, it, it, it absolutely was. Like it was that. modeled, it's I a, think, off an a bounty. old, it was, a, it was mount, it was modeled off an old law to like help capture slaves. They like took an old law and redid it um, to reward wow. people for reporting people that were getting an abortion or having knowledge of an abortion. So if you're the Uber driver and you drove somebody to an abortion clinic, you can now be arrested. <laughs> and we see what kind of big like issues of privacy this brings up. That yeah. and that was part of that's that's what people are saying about this overturning. Okay, there's multiple Supreme Courts uh court cases that have been built on Roe v. Wade. Are all those now at stake? And we're talking about like Obervel, like there's a lot of really big cases. Right. The uh the legal concept at the core of Roe v. Wade is applied to a bunch of other because mm-hmm. it's an issue of, of privacy, basically personal privacy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, wow. yeah. Well, that uh, is beyond the scope, <laughs> I, I guess, of of <laughs> so, what we came here to talk about today. So, how do is there, like how do accountants think? Because this went through my head when after the shootings, the last shootings, and I deep dived mm-hmm. and I just went down all these paths of the cost of mass shootings and taxes and IRS and guns and like 
you went down this spiral, and that could be a whole show on its own, right? Um, and again, though, it's it's complicated, right? To really get all the research and pull together, it, it's a whole thing. But it really started me thinking about how accountants ultimately, we, as an industry, accountants, EAs, maybe bookkeepers too, can influence what clients do, right? So when your client comes in and be like, well, why were my taxes this much? Well, well did you know that last year the U.S. government paid 300 X million dollars in lawsuit settlements due to mass school shootings. That's why your tax bill is this much this year. Like accountants could influence the political decisions of their clients. Like that's how accountants can influence the world. You really can. Um, when they, when, because people question why they're paying these taxes and you can give them real numbers. You, like this is where, so you paid $10,000 in taxes. This is how much of that went specifically to this. This is how much went to this. If you break down their taxes that way for them, it'll help them think about that at the polls a little bit versus and just I would, picking somebody. Yeah, and I would say that's different. Cause, so what David is not saying is that accountants you do, was it Expensify who sent out that email? Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't gotten my David Barrett email yet on this issue. Yeah. <laughs> so. when, when is he going to send an email <laughs> Long email explaining his thoughts on. We well, can't because Thursday he sent a huge long email about why they're different from Brex or they love small yeah, So I should be clear so that okay. David is not saying pull an expensify. <laughs> oh, and when I say David, I mean, I mean David Barrett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, no, like David, Leary David Leary is like saying, yeah. you know, he's like not saying, hey, accountants, if how you can influence them, like, you know, he's saying the act, actual numbers, not. Yeah, do a David Barrett. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying spam all your clients, but I mean, you yeah. individually can influence who mm -hmm. your clients vote for. So if accountant bookkeepers that are listening in EAs, you want to change the world. Do you think that's world, true, though? Do you, you really think influence. that like, we, can, we have influence? People, people go and buy cars and lease cars just so they can get some deduction because their accountant said, yes, you'll get some deduction. Like, oh, no, that's because somebody think, on TikTok think. told them they could get an LLC and buy a car TikTok with the LLC. Them, and they'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Pre, uh, that's, pre that's, TikTok, that's, people were doing that stuff. Yeah. But they're motivated, you know, oh, I want to get my expenses in by the 31st of the year. Like, they're, mo they, yeah. they're motivated by, they make tax-based decisions all the time in their life. Mm -hmm. And so, you can influence them to make tax-based decisions when they're voting. So, what have we learned today? You know what? I think uh, from my perspective, from all this, it's it's a very complicated issue, obviously. There's so many moving parts for it. I don't, you know, there's not a one size fits all. But from my opinion, it, how you actually lower abortions is by creating, you know, a thriving economic situation for people so they don't feel like they need to go do that. People can't afford this. So, okay, let's help them. And especially, yeah. again, look at the percentage wise, who's getting the most abortions, low income women of color. We know oh, why yeah. that is. That, like, and that was a stat we didn't talk about. It, it's like close to It's like half. 30. I know. It's in like, I think it, overall it's, it's 38%, but in some cities it's as high as 50%. Okay. And it's way, so it's basically way more out of proportion. Yes. Right? It's like higher. Yes. Yes. And, it's, and why, and why is that happening? Yes, it's it's got to be like the conclusion is we is it's got to be economic, right? Yeah, I agree with you, Laurelyn. Like, yeah. if, if you want to, I don't think there's anybody out there that's like, yay, more abortions, <laughs> right? Like those, the, you know, that's not, yeah, right. Like, it, it breaks my heart to hear that statistic because I'm like, it doesn't have to be this way, right? And we could change it if we wanted to as a society, but as a society collectively, we have to decide this is. This is a group of people worth investing in. You want to hear my crazy idea? Yes. My crazy idea is we should actually pay women to have children. Oh. I, I like, seriously, like, yeah. if you look long term at the direction of this country. Yeah. The demographics, like, it's not good, right? People are having fewer kids. Yeah. This is my crazy idea. Is like, actually, we should, like, they do this actually in Scandinavia, right? Yeah, like, there's yeah. places like Sweden, Norway, or whatever. Like, if you have a kid, like, you get money. I mean, we do this indirectly through and, tax policy, right? It's you, like here's a get, thousand bucks. Yeah, well, we do that, and then well, we, we have, give a child, child tax you know, credit. Tax it's credit. Like, yeah. We also um, some of this is just access, right? And and yeah. equal footing. And yes, you know, if yes. you outlaw it, 
certain demographics are going to yes. still be able to get this done. Well, David, the war on drugs worked so well, <laughs> yeah. right? We we grew up, Laurelyn and I, I don't know, did you have D.A.R.E. Oh, when you were in school? Oh, yeah. Because it, worked, it yeah. worked great on me. Like, I never, I never had any drugs ever <laughs> after that. Actually, so here's one statistic we didn't talk about was, okay, it's made illegal. People are still going to get it. What happens to the mothers? So in countries where it's legal, the incidence of um, healthy procedures happening is about 9 out of 10. So 9 out of 10 procedures, abortion procedures, go with, you know, no medical issues. In countries where it's illegal, 1 out of 4 go bad. So you have 25% of them, you have some type of medical issue happening as a result of it. So you have a lot more women dying in countries where it's illegal because the people performing it, the places you are, the methods they're trying to use aren't safe. So you have more yeah. lives. Uh, you're losing yeah. more lives as a result. So practically speaking, setting aside all the moral stuff, the actual effect of this decision is going to be more women die and we don't actually meaningfully reduce the number of abortions. It's a probably safe bet. Yeah. yeah. And, and more women in prison because there's laws out there saying, oh, these women should go to prison for 10 years. That's going to be, when the first prosecutions happen, that is going to be really weird TV, right? Could like, you imagine you, like all these moms? Because people with children have abortions. Just right. sending all the moms to prison. Right. Oh, and And over half... We're just full of numbers today, guys. <laughs> Over half of women who have one, did we already say this? I don't think we said already this. Already have children. Wow. Right? I don't so think it's I not, knew that one. I think there's this myth of like, you know, oh, it's women who don't want to have kids, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's actually like slightly more than 50% of women already have at least one child mm. when they get an abortion. So yeah. What are you going to do? Send, send mothers to jail? Send all the moms to jail because the dad's got this. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Yeah. So I just don't see, I don't see it working out great. No. Like the end result. I mean, we'll see, right? We'll see, but. And then like, this is going to become such an election issue. Election issue. Mm. Like, like to the point where. Oh, this is going like, to, like, this, like, is, this like, is really bad for the Republican Party, if you ask me, David. It, it like, is and this isn't. Is, this is the worst well, thing that could have happened to them right now. It, because they were going to win the, the next election. Absolutely. Look at the way things are headed, right? The economy, it's always the economy. Eco economy is going down. Mm -hmm. Biden's approval ratings are going down. They're set. Oh, and now you've got this issue to like excite the Democratic base? Like just politically, it's a disaster. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's just my feel. I, 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 that's yeah. beyond I, I, my expertise, perhaps. Yeah, it makes it very extreme, right? To where it's going to be, either you're on board with this on this side or you're not. Like, it, it, yeah. just, it, it just it turns the election into this one issue, right? And 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 I had these up grand hopes. I had these grand hopes that the next election would be about funding the IRS. <laughs> Sorry, accountants. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> our <in>. issues. <laughs> our issues. <laughs> hey, they still got. I. I. We. We didn't get to talk about it in this episode, David. But we're going to talk about it. Next time, uh, 21 million returns still on process. <laughs> so the IRS, you know, they said they were going to catch up, right? No, I did. Point, I'm gonna... getting a deposit on the 29th. When's the 29th? That's for my 2020 like return. Three days? Yeah. I, I, it's already yeah. in the pending status of my credit union. Oh, good. That's great. They finally got, they, they're getting They cleared done. out the cafeteria. They said they were going to be done the by the end of the month. <laughs> so they literally waited till the last day to ship these off. <laughs> well, hey- Laurelyn, you have a new podcast, and we need to talk about this new podcast because it's awesome. I do. I do. And Blake's not just blowing smoke. It really is awesome. <laughs> no, like, I, it was the first episode. I took a listen. I was like, this is probably going to be rough because if you go back and listen to me and David in our first episodes, it's terrible. Don't ever do that. Uh, but yours, it was, it's just amazing. You did an interview with Dan Luthi talking about mistakes. Yes. And it's... I, I, I don't know. I love listening to people's mistakes because I yes. learn so much more from failures than yes. from. Yes. Yeah. Know, so the, the, the podcast is called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly Accounting Podcast because, like, sometimes accounting is good, sometimes it's bad, and sometimes it's ugly. And so <laughs> we definitely have six episodes. And so Dan was the first one. And each episode, I try to have like a very 
catchy hook on it. Like the titles are all super clickbaity. So, but also interesting. So it's all people from Avalara's meta influencer list. And so it's very much directed toward, you know, what are these problems? What are the solutions for it? And so that's kind of like the format of like, okay, here's this issue. So the next, can I say the name of the next one coming out? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's so the it. next one Let's... is called 2.6 out of five stars. And it has to do with accountant satisfaction in our industry. <laughs> and so great. that's like the whole premise of it and how to, um, you know, make, make the job more enjoyable for you, for your employees. Like it, that was a really great informative episode. So definitely take a listen to that one. So be sure to subscribe to this search for the good, the bad, and the ugly accounting podcast. And we'll have the link to that in the show notes. It, and it's available for CPE yes. on Earmark. So you yes. can listen to this. You hear this great interview. You learn something from firm owners, thought leaders who are doing this stuff. And then you get free CPE for listening. Yeah. So download Earmark. Yeah, Earmark that's, CPE. You just reminded me I have like a couple days to finish up my CPE. <laughs> Two year period end, so I better do some of that this week. You can listen to podcasts, <laughs> listening to two X podcasts, and then take the quiz on your mark. Yes, you can. That is not against the rules, <laughs> according to NASBA, because you know time and space is relative. They're going to see eighty hours submitted for one day. I'm like, what about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, maybe maybe we should advise people like, please do not submit more than twenty four hours of CPE in a single day, <laughs> as the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy might become suspicious. Yes. <laughs> Even if you explain to them that you listen to 2x speed, you first have to explain what a podcast is. Yes. And then you have to explain what 2x speed means. Yeah, and I'd have <laughs> one playing it's... on every device. I have four episodes going at once. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. That I hadn't even considered that. Can you do that? I mean, like, is, I don't know if there's anything in the handbook against that. <laughs> do we... Let's just stretch this to the limits. Like, <laughs> That's what we do as accountants, right? We we push the oh, envelope. Yes. Oh yeah. yes. So, oh, that's awesome. Well, anything else we should add, David? Before we go, I don't know. I think we will be we there. I suspect we'll be talking about this again. Like, yeah. Well, especially mm -hmm. if we piss people off today. Then I was we'll definitely... thinking about some letters you'll probably get, and I'm sorry <laughs> in advance if I'm the cause of any of them. I tr no, I tried to be respectful don't... to you know both sides of it, and yeah. Well, and like I said. And like you said, um, I think like I can actually I, I understand the moral argument because yeah. I live I, I live that mm -hmm. I totally like internalized that I believed it. Mm -hmm. And so and I actually don't think that is necessarily wrong. Yeah. Like I am not I, I don't have like strong opinions one way or the other on that. Mm -hmm. I'm really more about like, how do we actually make the world a better place from a practical standpoint? Mm -hmm. and I think we actually came to a really good conclusion using actual data today. Mm hmm. And for that, I'm grateful. Yes. I learned stuff. Thank you both. Uh, David, what's your Twitter handle? I'm at David Leary. How about you, Laurelyn? At Laurelyn Wilson. And I am at Blake T. Oliver. Thank you both. I had a lot of fun today. I learned a lot. I hope our listeners did too. And you can get CPE for listening to this episode. Go to earmarkcpe.com. About a week after this episode drops, you'll see a course on the app. You can take the quiz, get your free CPE certificate. And by the way, if you have opinions, and you very well might have strong opinions uh, today based on uh, what we talked about, we want to hear them. You can email me, blake at blakeoliver.com. And if you want, you can send a voicemail. Record a voice memo on your phone. Send that to me, and we will listen, and we will likely play it on the air. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you both. Laura Lynn Wilson, David Leary. Thank, thank you. you. Soon. Bye. 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 Time for the classifieds. If you're looking to quickly grow a scalable, systematic seven-figure accounting firm without having to work 50 plus hours per week, check out Ryan Lozanis' online coaching membership, Future Firm Accelerate. Sign around Ryan's experience taking his cloud firm from scratch to sale so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You'll get online learning and topics that help you automate and systemize all aspects of your firm. You'll get coaching when you need help with implementation. And you'll also join a collaborative community of hundreds of other forward-thinking firm owners. For more details, head over to www.futurefirmaccelerate.com. Tired of clients not remembering to get W9s? Get W9 automates and streamlines the collection and storage of W9s. Get W9 has a QBO integration, and they have a partner program that pays 25% commissions. Get W9 plans start at only $19 a year. 
Visit getw9.tax today to get started. That is getw9.tax. Are you looking for a dream job in cloud accounting? We have the job for you. Advisors for Change delivers cloud accounting systems to small and medium nonprofit organizations. Join our team of friendly and collaborative nonprofit accounting professionals while working from home. Our systems associate will join our experienced systems manager to implement and support cloud accounting systems such as QBO, Bill.com, Divi, SASAN, and others. To learn more, head to our website at advisorsforchange.com slash join dash our dash team. That's advisorsforchange.com slash join dash our dash team. We will find a link to the full position description on Indeed. Are your bookkeeping clients driving you crazy asking the same questions over and over? They need QuickBooks training and you have more important things to do with your time. Let RoyalWise be your training partner. Create your own customized client training program and outsource your QuickBooks training department. Listeners of this podcast are invited to join our partner program and receive a 10% referral commission when you sign up. Join us at RoyalWise.com slash partner to learn more and get started today. Again, that's RoyalWise.com slash partner. Are you a tech savvy accountant that knows how to lead a team and loves interacting with clients? Are you looking to grow from a controller or CFO into a leadership role? ResolveWorks is hiring a director of client accounting to lead our services team and be a key member of our firm leadership. We are a collaborative team serving entrepreneurs building fast growing startups. We are fully remote, offer flexible schedules and have a suite of attractive benefits. To learn more and submit your interest, visit resolve-works.com slash careers. That is resolve-works.com slash careers. Hey, podcast listeners, it's Blake, and I wanted to let you know about a new show I'm working on with CPA slash comedian Greg Kite and blogger slash former CPA Caleb Newquist. It's called Oh My Fraud, and it's a podcast all about financial crimes. That's right, a true crime podcast for accountants by accountants. Caleb and Greg are going to come together every couple weeks to unpack their favorite frauds and explore the circumstances, psychology, and interpersonal dynamics involved. They also fully indulge in victim blaming the defrauded widows, orphans, infirm, and feeble-minded because who can resist? If you fancy yourself a trusted advisor or prefer your true crime with spreadsheets instead of corpses, listen to this show to learn what to watch out for and to keep your clients, your firm, and even yourself safe. To subscribe, go to ohmyfraud.com or search Oh My Fraud on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Want to get the word out about your newsletter, webinar, party, Facebook group, podcast, ebook, job posting, or that fancy Excel macro you just created? Why not let the listeners of the Cloud Accounting Podcast know by running a classified ad? Hit the show notes for the link to get more info.